Hi everyone, it's Andy from Hobby Headquarters. Well, many of you may know that I'm working on our next video right now, the Panzer 3M from TACOM. In fact, we just did a video on building tracks. And what else I thought I would do is I wanted to build a small diorama to display this in my store. And rather than adding, you know, an extra 15 minutes onto the video for this, I decided to make a separate little short video. It's only about 11 minutes long. And we're going to show you how we came up with this little diorama. It's a simple little diorama that you can display any type of vehicle on. It's small enough that you can put on a bookcase, a countertop like in my, my case, or all kinds of other places. It's very simple to make, uh, uses very few tools, and I'm going to show you how it goes together right now. So, let's get started! So what we're going to do is we're going to build a base for our Panzer III, or actually any style tank of about that size, with this little uh, little wooden frame. So basically what it is, it's just a frame of wood with a piece of plywood already mounted on it. And you can pick these up. I actually found this at the, uh, the hardware store. They're very cheap and it's way easier than having to try to make one up yourself. And you just buy it and it's ready to go. So you can see by the size of it how it's going to work with the Panzer III. Move this off here. And I have some of my leftover pink insulation foam. And this was actually the reverse cut from our ADAT diorama. So we already have part of the berm all ready to go. I've also taken a few other little scrap pieces that we have. And we're just going to build up a little side of the hill. So it gets you an idea how this is going to look. As if the, uh, the Panzer III is seeking a little bit of shelter. There'll be a grass up on top here maybe a little bit of a, uh, a rut for or road through the middle and then maybe a little bit more grass over here. But now that we have that in place and we've got some other little scrap pieces we're going to fill in right here. This is just going to be the base of our plaster that we're going to go and put on. First thing we need to do is we need to take some type of glue. I like using this Gorilla Glue for the, the foam. It's water activated so we just put a little bit on each side of the, or excuse me, one side, wet the other and then put a lot of weight on top of here to hold this down because this glue expands like foam and it, it can actually lift your parts off there. So if you put a lot of weight on there, it's really, really strong and your foam is not going to come off the, uh, the wood base later. So what I'll do is I'm just going to go ahead and glue all of this down right now. It takes probably about, about a good hour or so to dry and once that dries, we can start working on the plaster. The glue has now set up on the foam and it's all attached nicely to it. This is how I think we're going to do the actual model on there in that position with a little bit of a hillside. Can remove this now. Now we're going to get out our sculpt mold, mix up a batch of that, and start filling in the rest of the hillside here. been about 10 minutes of working the plaster and when it gets to a certain point the plaster starts to become much more shapeable and we want to make sure we just have a very thin layer going across the bottom here so we can still put our tracks in but we're definitely not ready for that yet it would be just stick to the vehicle and make kind of a mess out of it you'll kind of get the feel once you see when it hits that point also one other thing I forgot to mention we put masking tape around the entire edge of this and that is just for cleanup later on once we're done we'll be able to peel that off and still have our nice clean edge at this point we're just working in and starting to make some of the ruts that come down the side of the hill you can start to basically start to put shape into it but you'll, you'll actually wait probably maybe 15-20 minutes and then the plaster just gets to this point where it wants to be shaped much easier so we're gonna keep doing this right now keep working on our ruts and I'll come back in a few minutes and show you what it looks like. We're at a point now that the we can take our paper off there. I know that was creating quite a bit of uh, whitewash on the film but now I'm just taking a little cup of water and with my finger dipping it in there 
and this is the area we can really start to smooth down and contour the surfaces of this and with about another five or ten minutes of this too we can actually go ahead and put our track links which all we're going to do is just take a pair of our tracks and just push them into the plaster and they'll be still soft enough to take the imprint but not so soft that it'll come up with the track so with the water in hand you can see how it starts to really smooth out and that's why we're going to create our ruts from like where rainwater had washed down the side of the hill okay I've decided just to go ahead and use the actual tank to push into the uh, the wet mud so to speak it's actually not going to be mud on the diorama it's actually just going to be soil but we want to create the nice little imprint so you can see just like that making sure we get all of this done so there's some tracks all the way back and then finally the last little bit we'll push right into here I'm just wiggling it back and forth just to get it to really sink in to give it some evidence of weight in this vehicle just like that so I am going to let that sit for a couple of seconds and then we're gonna pull it up clean off of our track and then let this fully dry Next we're going to apply the static grass and I'm going to use static tack to put this on. Now that everything's dried we're just going to take a variety of pigment colors and start applying pigment to the dirt areas to give them more of a dry dusty effect as opposed to a painted effect which you can see has a little bit of a, a little bit of a shine to it so with this pigment and blending it together it'll give it a lot more realistic look to it and we also want to take and put a little bit on the the tracks imprints to kind of blend that together as well and once all the pigments on we're just going to take a little clean enamel thinner kind of blot it on here and it'll kind of blend everything together it's dark right now obviously because it's wet but once it dries it'll dry to a much flatter and even more even and while we're waiting for that stuff to dry we're gonna go ahead and put a few little weeds here and there break up some of the grass effect and we're just gluing them down with our static tack. And here we are, here is our completed diorama. And you can see how we got the nice little dust effect once all of that stuff dried. Plus we also created a little area uh, that if you've ever seen like a worn away side of a hill is sometimes you get the rotten roots and grass area in there we created that up inside there now remember this is just a simple diorama to display the Panzer III that we're working on I wanted to create something to put up on my uh, countertop to display the tank rather than just sitting on a on a plain board and this is something that you can easily make show off your model it just takes a couple of days that's why it's a short video and in fact we'll give you a little sneak peek of now this has not been weathered at all yet. This has just been painted and decaled. Just finished that up just a few minutes ago. 
we are going to put weathering all over this, but gives you a general idea how you can display your model. Plus, also, I took the diorama outside and took a few pictures, and just before we go, I'm going to show you what those look like, and you'll see the realism that comes out of having natural light with shadow on it. So, I want to thank you guys, as always, for watching, and please stay tuned, because we have many more videos coming, including the building of the TACOM Panzer III model.